Hi everyone, this is Susan Brown at the Center for Better Bones. I'm really happy to be with you again on Thursday for our Facebook Live Chats. We're going to try to do these chats as many Thursdays as possible, 1230 Eastern Standard Time, so that you have a chance to personally ask me your questions. And also, it's an opportunity for me to review some new research. Often, I'm going to have a little discussion about what we spoke about in the blog. And in fact, this week, we're going to talk about this whole idea of how to get the cleanest possible fruits and vegetables. You know, and this is very important to us because here at the Center for Better Bones, it's been really two decades now that we've been developing the Better Bones, Better Body program. This is the most comprehensive program that there is really in the world on building bone health naturally. And it's actually our mission to explore the potential for everyone to maintain strong bones all of their life and to actually begin rebuilding bone at any stage of their life. A central part of the Better Bones, Better Body program is the diet. Those of you who know of my work know that we champion the alkaline diet. I've written a book on it. Now you'll see that little book over there. That book's translated into many languages. It's a very popular topic because people all over the world know that pH balance makes a difference to their health and it makes a very big difference to bone. So the alkaline diet is a really big part of the Better Bones program. The alkaline diet consists of lots of vegetables. In fact, we always say two cups of vegetables for lunch, two for dinner. Significant fruits if you can do it, and you can use the low glycemic fruits like berries and citrus and that, but significant fruits, nuts and seeds, herbs and spices, and what we call some of these uh, smaller lentils, some of those small pulses. And of course, those are all alkalizing. Now, of course, you're going to have some protein, which is acid forming, and you're going to have some grains probably. So they're always going to be acid forming things, but we put the majority of our food to alkalizing. And the way you can tell, you start with those two cups of vegetables for lunch and dinner, a few servings of fruits, lots of nice spices, nuts and seeds, and how you can see if your diet is actually alkaline. Do you remember? Those of you who followed my work probably know. You can actually measure your pH, and you can use this little simple pH strip, a little simple pH strip, and you can measure your pH. And you look for a first morning urine of 6.5 to 7.5. This is so important that we've produced a whole pH test kit that you can just learn about the diet. You can learn how to test your own pH. It has my book and all that. You can find that all on our website at betterbones.com. But today I want to talk about that challenge of getting vegetables that are the, 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 the least contaminated, the purest, the most wholesome as possible. The alkaline diet is really a high vegetable diet, so we want to pay attention to the vegetables. This brings us to the blog topic for this week, which was this whole question of the dirty dozen. You're probably all somewhat familiar with this idea that pesticides are abundant in our environment. There is each human, each of us Americans have 29 different pesticides in the body. A single apple can be sprayed 30 different pesticides. And what did I see as strawberries, the recent strawberries tested up to six pesticides in them. Actually, all in all, more than 1 billion pounds of pesticides are used in the US and a lot of that gets back into our body. You've probably seen some of the research of the many health hazards of pesticides, particularly to children and particularly for endocrine disruption, altering the reproductive function. Children, you find attention deficit, allergies, you find many systemic problems with pesticides. So we, we know it's better to get the purest food possible. The US government every year actually tests the food for pesticide load. And what they do is they go to the supermarket, they pick out some vegetables and fruits, they wash them or they peel them. So these foods that you see tested were actually already cleaned. And this is this is this this idea of telling you which foods have most pesticide and which foods have least. They call it the dirty dozen, which are the ones that are most polluted, most contaminated with pesticides. And then you have the clean 15. What they do is they then measure these foods uh, 
they take the government measurements, which is the Department of Agriculture, and there's an environmental working group, and every year they publish this. And I like every year to look at this carefully. We've made this recent blog, and I suggest you print out this blog and put it on your refrigerator. Um, you might remember, if you've, if you've looked at the blog already, you might remember that these things change around. Like last year, uh, for many years, for many years, apples have been the highest, but now we see that strawberries have taken over. And so there's changes. And we saw that pears were very low. They weren't even on the top 10 list. And now pears are ranking, what is it, like number, number four or five. Pears have come right up there on this whole thing. Let me see exactly what pears came up to. So you want to watch it over the years to see how they change. And the implication is, we know that we know that the the best way to get pure food, uh, if we had to put a scale, the best way is to grow it yourself. I wanted to. I'm so proud. This is my kale from my backyard raised bed. A really simple garden to do. This is my collard. This is the collards, and this is the kale. So simple, so nice to grow. And a couple different kinds of lettuce grow very simply. Green lettuce, one of my favorites, and of course red lettuce. Such a simple thing to do. So you might do a backyard garden. That's fun, and it's fun to watch the plants grow. You know they're very pure. You can go to your farmer's market, and of course, you can look for the organic farmers. This, I'm very proud of my berries, strawberries, no pesticides, and raspberries. Again, these are just things I planted for the fun of it. They grow by themselves. I don't have to do much work. It's a very nice thing. More practical, because we don't all have gardens, maybe. And honestly, I produce only a small amount in my garden. More important is the to take this list. And so really, if you want to begin getting the highest quality alkalizing foods, you just look it over. And so the dirty dozens, as you remember, strawberries, spinach. Spinach has surprisingly come up on the list. Uh, I personally like spinach, but I'm very surprised that really, if you had a choice, you should get organic spinach or be very careful with spinach. Apples, nectarines are quite highly pesticide exploded. Peaches, cherries, grapes, celery, bell peppers. Pears came right up there, tomatoes and potatoes. You know, it's interesting. The other day, a couple of weeks ago, I was buying some potatoes and I'd forgotten about this list. And I actually got commercial potatoes, and a friend of mine, a doctor, said, hey, you know, you really should be careful that this is one of the most contaminated foods. I myself failed to look at this list. So put the list up, memorize it, and you can, you can maybe say, well, what I will eat more of the clean ones, like avocados and pineapples and cabbage and onions and peas and papayas, asparagus. There's many foods that are not very highly sprayed. So that's one thing we can do. As the ancients say, Purification leads to progress, and, and every every step we make helps. We can't do everything. We can't always buy organic, but we can take care to get the least contaminated fruits and vegetables. And we also know that if we do get organic, we're getting more minerals, more nutrients. And actually, I saw some interesting research that even, you, even wild apples, for example, if you're out someplace where, in a field where there's wild apples, they have much more nutrients than the domesticated ones. So I know I was brought in the country. I was brought up in the country. We had apple trees, plum trees, all this. If you have a chance to get exposure to those, they're very nice. So every year, stick this on the refrigerator, carry it around with you, remember it. It'll serve you well. We'll have a, we'll have a higher quality alkaline diet. Now, one of the things we want to do is once in a while answer some questions. So I'm going to take a minute here and see if there's any particular questions you'd like answered at this particular time. Uh, and, and I'm going to answer a question from last week while I'm waiting for you to type in your questions uh, or to send those questions to us. One, you know, we're getting quite a few questions on fracture, people who have fractured. Uh, of course, at the Center for Better Bones, we help people build bone health, but fractures do occur, and many people are drawn to our work because they have fractured. In fact, over time, we have found that there's a very excellent way, if you use the same Better Bones program, but a little bit adjusted, you can speed fracture healing. We have many, many cases where people can heal fractures 
much more quickly. And in fact, on the website, on betterbones.com, if you search fracture healing, you'll find the article we wrote giving the 20 top tips of how to speed fracture healing. But some of the cases I get are people who had very severe fractures. And, and you know, we always want to think, one, okay, how can we speed that healing? We need to do the alkaline diet. We need to get all the nutrients. We need to produce the body capacity of a lot of antioxidants because a fracture damages bone the body has to then tear down all the broken bad pieces of bone damaged pieces of bone and put new pieces of bone so we want to be sure to get plenty of antioxidants and we want to be sure to be careful if we tend to smoke or tend to drink alcohol we want to limit our exposure to those things because they slow down fracture healing so all the same nutrients we would use on the Better Bones, Better Body program we use, plus a few more. We're very fond of antioxidants like fully buffered ascorbate, a special kind of vitamin C that alkalizes and also protects bone. So when people talk about fractures, you know, and like I say, recently we've got a couple really complicated letters on fracture of people who wanted to know what they should do with their fractures. And of course they should go to the doctor and get healed. But then we should spend a little bit of time seeing why did I fracture? You know, is there some weakness in the bone? And this brings us to the issue of the medical causes behind osteoporosis. Say, say one of the women who rose was 60. She was walking her dog. She tripped the dog on the leash and she fell down and broke her wrist. So you could say, well, this is just a trauma fracture. You know, she but she fell. But any time you get a fall from standing height, you really think this is probably a fragility fracture. This person probably shouldn't have fractured. Now, when you go to the doctor, if they put a screw in, you can ask them, hey, do the bones look strong or do the bones look weak? In other words, they tell you how hard it was to put that screw in or not. But as a whole, we want to find out if you fracture, the first question is why did this fracture occur? Is there any medical cause for a weakening of bone? And again, this is something, this topic of looking for the causes behind bone weakening, this is something we specialize in at the Center for Better Bones. It's very important to us, and we've written a whole article on the medical workup for osteoporosis. You're probably familiar, you'd say, if a person fractures, they should be tested for vitamin D, they should be tested for a loss of calcium in the urine, they should be tested for, perhaps for parathyroid hormone, there's many, many tests you want to look at, especially if you think the fracture was needless. That's a really important thing. Great. So fracture healing is important to us. Building strong bone is important to us. And all of that takes us back to our topic of getting the, the purest possible fruits, vegetables, and nuts and seeds. And this is with a dirty dozen will be a big help. So I hope you all have a great week. I hope you take your dirty dozen, stick it right up on the refrigerator, your dirty dozen and your clean 15. <clears throat> Try to consume the foods that have less pesticides and your alkaline diet would be much better. It's my pleasure. We appreciate you sharing the work of the work at betterbones.com. We have a, a blog that comes out every single week so people can subscribe to that. Whenever possible, we're going to try to do these little chats. Um, and see if we can possibly answer some of the questions. Um, we do have a couple questions here. Uh, there is a question about lemon water. Should I always try to use organic? You know, and here we get, of course, it's always better to use organic. But sometimes it's not possible. I did, however, find that in the stores there was a, a, there's a nice organic concentrated lemon juice. So I might buy organic lemons, and if I run out, then I have the concentrated. Lemons, I don't think, are necessarily amongst the really highly sprayed foods, so it's more important to have the lemon than to worry about if it's, if it's organic, if you can't get organic. You know, it's interesting. One of the things I didn't mention is even the environmental working group who produces this, this, uh, this document of the ones that are most contaminated with pesticides and the ones that are released, they suggest that you use these, that these sprays can be done. Say you can't get organic. Of course, you're going to peel the food and you're going to wash it, but they have some natural veggie washes, which are made with citrus and other factors. So you might say, 
okay, I'm going to wash, especially if it's a vegetable, you're eating the skin. So that's a really good idea to maybe try a little bit of wash. Get the organic when you can. Try the wash when you can't. It's, it's not always possible in many parts of the world to get organic, many parts of this country. But if you, the more we support the organic farmers, the more we're going to have organic produce. Um, one of my clients, some of my clients are organic farmers, and they're so busy because there's a great demand. So things will change, and we'll see. We're going to learn, learn soon that if we poison the food supply, we poison ourselves. And I think we're moving in that direction. We're going to see lots of improvement. Let's see if there's anything else we can answer. You know, there's a lot of questions we get on drinking water. And isn't it interesting? Because these pesticides, of course, go into the ground. They get into the water as well as heavy metals and many other herbicides, many, many things in the water. So this question is, is distilled water okay to drink? Distilled water is the water they use on ships. It's the water that's a very pure water. Everything is taken out. All the minerals are taken out. All the toxins are taken out. So distilled water is a pure water. It's fine to drink, but distilled water is a little bit hungry, like they say. So if you store it in a plastic bottle, it tends to, it tends to take on uh, elements from its surrounding because it's a very hungry water. Uh, but so I don't generally prefer distilled water. I preferred spring water, trying to get regular spring water. In almost every, every area around the country, you'll find companies selling spring water if that's possible. If not, distilled water is fine. I sometimes may, I may put even a piece of seaweed in it or something to get it a little more mineralized. I think that can be a help. And if a person says, I really, I really can't afford distilled water and I can't get spring water, there are some there are, of course, you always want to boil the water to get the chlorine out or at least at least let it sit. And if there's some very nice filters that are not very expensive. In fact, we have one, I think, on our website or we can tell you about that. You don't need plumbing. You just put the water in and it goes through filtering systems that can take out the toxins and even take out fluoride. Uh, pure water is really important. And and we encourage everyone to get, you know, to either use a filtration system, get spring water or distilled water, which you maybe put, I say seaweeds in to get, a, you know, the, the nutritional seaweeds to get a little more minerals back in it. And don't store it in plastic, store it in glass. Great. Let me see if there's anything else before we close here today. Um, let's see. People always, the one last thing people always uh, ask me about, I see here, is that, this thing of alkalizing compounds, like why is it that lemon alkalizes? You're, you're always encouraging people to take lemon juice and lime juice when it tastes acid. And we're just remembering that what happens, it's not the taste of the food that decides how it impacts the body, it's how it's metabolized. So that, that lemon or lime, whether it's organic or conventional, that's going to alkalize because the citric acid is converted by the body into bicarbonate and water. Lemon and lime are nice. They're alkalizing even though they taste acid. Same thing with apple cider vinegar. Try to get a full, arrange, full array of vegetables. Try to eat every color, you know, many different colors every day. In fact, one of the original Japanese dietary guidelines several years ago I saw was eat foods of every color every day. That's really a great idea. That's an important thing to do. Okay, well, we've got some activity here. We need to get back to work, but I hope you had a great time. And hope you sign up next week. Join us on Facebook Live, 1230 Eastern Standard Time, and we'll try to answer your questions and talk about our blogs. It's been my pleasure to be with you. Susan Brown of the Center for Better Bones, betterbones.com. Look us up, and we'll talk later. Bye-bye.